Hello, Raiders of Lost Family History. My name is Carol Osborne. Today I will be covering the Oklahoma Historical Society, so let's get started. The Oklahoma Historical Society's webpage is chock full of valuable information. Anything from the Oklahoma History Center, museums, and as we scroll down, black history, Native American history, and so on. Today we're going to be focusing solely on the Research Center and genealogy. I thought we would start off looking at some of the information contained within this page. Most of these ha are nice because they do have a place to search for name and any other information you might actually have. They have dolls rolls, they have Friedman applications, but they also have this Chiloco Indian School Index, which I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. The nice thing about this is that you do actually have digitized yearbooks. And we'll go in here and take a look at one of them. It does take a minute to load. And here we go. You got pictures of the classes, the actual buildings, and individual students. This is very nice and handy. You can actually do a name search, which is great. They also have a YouTube channel, which is also very handy. And we'll go back to our genealogy page. The next grouping I would like to look at is the marriage, divorce, prison, and death information. Funeral home records are very interesting. This will let you search for last name, first name, and it will actually bring up the records for the Wilson Funeral Home and the Mills Funeral Home in Grant County. Now, if you are lucky enough to have someone that lived in that area that might have passed away, they might have the records for that. And we have uh, some other information. Uh, one of these, a lot of times, either you are fascinated by it or you're very put off, is the Oklahoma State Penitentiary records. Now, what's nice about this is that you can search by first and last name. However, if you want a copy of the photo cards or they even have fingerprint cards it does cost extra. This is also on Instagram which is kind of nice because you can click on that and view a lot of people. Now I think these range in the 1930s mostly. Um, some photos are not in very good shape, others are in pretty decent shape. But they are fascinating to read and some of them are front and back so once you click on it uh, it will let you know if there's something on the back side of that. All right let's go back here and then we will scroll down here to the 1933 Unemployment Relief Census. Now again, this gives you information on those that needed assistance as they were unemployed. Not, not unlike what we have today, but it's only for the 1933. 
year. Again, I do believe um, that this, and I'll just put in a random name here, something that's fairly common, and this is what it'll bring up. So as you can see, got name, the county, what they did, need relief, which probably is a good thing. You know, that's something that you don't usually see. All right, and the next things we will be looking at will be the Daughters of the Union Vets application. Again, you need to have first and last names that will pull up some good information. Then we have a, actually we have a teacher's report on this. Again, if you have a student's last name, we'll use something fairly common. It'll tell you everything, you know, what tribe or race they were in, their age, the teacher's name, which is kind of different, and so on. I did run across uh, something called Brick Stories in here. Uh, I'm not seeing it right at the moment. Um, but you, as you can see, there's a lot of very interesting things in here. They have uh, some family tree stories. And most of these are indexes, so if there is something that you find, you might actually have to pay to order a copy of it. Let's see, this is very interesting. This is plat maps, which sometimes can be fairly revealing as to where those folks lived. You have land lottery tickets. So again, it's only from 1901, so uh, in two counties, but there is a list of names. They also have the Oklahoma Military Casualties Database. Uh, again, we'll put in a very common name and it will tell you where they were from, possibly a family name, how they died, and which war they were in. So this is some very, very good information if you haven't found it in other places. Yes, they do have the abbreviations right here. And they have something called the Oklahoma Military Hall of Fame which is very nice. They've got sketches of these folks that served. And the further down you go, uh, you do get into actual photographs at, down further in the, in the body. And it does give you a tad bit of history on them as well. What, they, what medals that they received. So as you can see, they have resource guides and research guides, charts that you can print out. Um, but the, the information on the whole is very nice. Uh, I thought the, um, the information on the family trees, if I can find it again, was 
very helpful. It's a list of museums and their sites. Uh, and the Gateway to Oklahoma History is another good source. Uh, it possibly has newspapers, anything, you know, photographs. Uh, you might search that to see if you can find some photographs of your family that might have lived out in that way. They have audio and oral histories, which is fascinating. You can listen to some of them on YouTube. And, of course, some of these are only available if you go to the Historical Society. Uh, you can get a copy for $25 if you choose to do that. But I would highly suggest you go and search the website. It's very informative. And who knows, you might just find some of your family there. So that wraps up our presentation of the Oklahoma Historical Society and I would like to thank everyone for joining me today. Have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.